This video is over lesson 80, using a constant factor to solve ratio problems. Please copy the title down into your notes, and when you're ready, continue. Moving on in 3, 2, 1. Before we begin, we're going to review a few things about ratios. First of all, ratios do not use units. The name of the ratio tells you what those units would be. So for example, if I'm talking about the ratio of dogs to cats, and I tell you that the ratio is 5 to 4, then you know that for every 5 dogs, there are 4 cats. This first number goes with this first word. The second number goes with this second word. So if I have 10 dogs, which is double this, then I must have double that, so 8 cats, and so on and so on. Also, remember to reduce your ratios. So for example, if we have a ratio of 21 to 18, well we know that we can divide both of these by 3. And so the reduced ratio would be 7 to 6. Moving on in 3, 2, 1. Now we're almost ready to start but we're going to go over one more tool that will help us as we solve ratio problems. And that's called the ratio box. The ratio box is pretty simple. It's going to be a box split into two columns and two rows. Neither of which need to be really big. The two columns will always be ratio and actual. The two rows, however, are going to relate to whatever problem you're trying to solve. And when we describe things with ratios, we always have two things that are being related, two groups. And so the first row is going to be group 1, whatever that is. And the second group will be group 2. So we're going to replace the red parts with whatever comes from our story problem. Moving on in 3, 2, 1. Now with those reminders and learning about the ratio box, we are ready to tackle a problem. So here's our problem. In one class, the ratio of boys to girls was 3 to 1. True story, actually. If there were 5 girls, how many boys were there? And this is actually, like I said, a true story from the first year that I taught 6th grade. I actually did have a class with this ratio of boys to girls. And there were actually 5 girls in the class. So how many boys did I have? Well, we're going to start with a ratio box. The benefit of the ratio box is it helps us organize the information. And this column is always the ratio. And the second column is the actual. Now, if we look at the story problem, the ratio is the ratio of boys to girls. So those are my two groups. So the first number in the ratio is the number of boys. So I'm going to and the second row, I'm going to label girls. Now, we're going to look at the problem to actually start filling things in in the box. So the ratio numbers are right there. They're going to go in the ratio column. So the first number is the ratio number of the boys. Well, that's going to be 3. The second number is the ratio number of the girls. So that's going to be 1. Now I've got this other number here that is the actual number of girls that were in the class. So there wasn't just one girl in the class, there were actually five girls in the class. 
So I'm going to fill that in here, which leaves me with this empty space, which since I don't know what it is, I'm going to fill it with x for right now. Now what the ratio box has done for us is it has collected the information so that way 3 to 1 has to be the same as x to 5 because this is my reduced ratio but in the real world numbers are not necessarily reduced. We reduce them to make life easier, to make communication easier, but in the real world they may not be reduced. So I have a reduced ratio and an unreduced ratio. So I'm going to mathematically make a connection there. So I have a 3 to 1 ratio and that needs to equal the unreduced ratio x to 5. Well, these are similar to fractions. So just as you can divide by a form of 1 to reduce, I can also multiply by a form of 1 to unreduce. So 3 over 1 times what over itself would give me x over 5. Well, I want to go from 1 times something that gives me 5. This should be pretty easy. It's got to be 5. So, take a look now at your numerators. We know that 3 times 5 equals x. So, x equals, 3 times 5 is, 15. Now, x was in the first row, so the label then will be boys. So 15 boys. The 5 here in my form of 1 is going to be called the constant factor. Since we multiplied both the denominator and the numerator by it in order to find out that missing number. Moving on in 3, 2, 1. We're going to run through two more problems quickly with just a slight difference between the two of them to show you how important it is to use the ratio box to help you line things up. So, the ratio of dogs to cats is 5 to 4. If there are 20 dogs, how many cats are there? So notice that I chose 20 especially because both 5 and 4 go into 20. So that makes it a little hard to tell what your constant factor is going to be. Is this taking 5 and multiplying it by 4 to get 20? Or taking 4 and multiplying it by 5 to get 20? Well, let's take a look at the ratio box. So in the ratio box, we always have our ratio column. And we always have our actual column. And then my two groups are dogs and cats. So dogs comes first and then cats come second. And now we fill in the numbers. The ratio number for dogs is 5. The ratio number for cats is 4. And now let's take a look at this number. This number here tells me that there are 20 dogs. So there are actually 20 dogs. So fill in 20 there. And now we can see that Oops, sorry, put that x in there. 5 to 4 times my constant factor has to give me 20 over x. So, if 5 times something is 20, that's going to have to be a constant factor of 4. So, use that to solve the problem. 4 times 4 then is my unknown. Well, 4 times 4 is 16, so there are 16 cats. Moving on in 3, 2, 1. For our last example, we're going to take a look at the ratio of dogs to cats is 5 to 4, same as last time. If there are 20 cats, how many dogs are there? So this time we've switched around cats and dogs, so that there are 20 cats this time instead of 20 dogs. So, set up a ratio box real quick. 
So I've got my ratio column and my actual column. And then just like before, dogs to cats are my two groups. So dogs and cats. Ratio number for dogs is still 5. The ratio number for cats is still 4. But this time I actually have 20 cats, but an unknown number of dogs. So this time, 5 to 4 times my constant factor has to equal something to 20. Well, 4 times something is 20. Well, that's 5. So the constant factor this time is 5. Finish it off. 5 times 5 is my unknown. So x equals 25, and that would be dogs. This video ends in 3, 2, 1.